So I have been researching the Warcraft series, and after spending several minutes, I have concluded that it's a series about NPCs fighting very slowly. But I would like to share the rest of my research. Warcraft 1 was the first strategy game ever made. There were strategy games before it, but I have never played them, so they don't exist. If you have ever played this strategy game, you know what to expect. You build houses, workers, troops, then complain about the opposite faction being overpowered. In the first game, you had to build roads to build houses. This is a bit annoying. But in the alpha version of the game, you also had to apply for a building permit with city council. There are two different campaigns. The human campaign, where you defend against the orc invaders. They really like saying yes. Yes, yes, yes. These people deserve to be destroyed. In the end of that campaign, the humans win. The orc campaign is harder because they insult you. We need to gather gold for our barracks. Also, use some of that gold to buy new clothes. Where did you find those? In a dumpster? Hey man, if I'm going to war, I need some positive reinforcement. But the orcs have a more fleshed out ending. It ends with the orcs winning. The official ending of the last game was the orc one. Sorry, I just spoiled the movie for you. Warcraft 2 was developed in a year and was better in every way. Once again proving that the shorter the development cycle, the better the game. In game, six years have passed since the first war and in that time they have managed to invent boats. And also refine oil. You expected one of those things to take a bit longer. The humans now have allies, dwarves with their cannon and their discrimination lawsuits, and elves that have magical bows and can bend the laws of physics to look cool. That is bullshit, Peter Jackson. The orcs also get allies, the trolls. They have uh, access and they are also green. Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness, more like Warcraft 2 Humans Butcher Green People. And that's the game summed up! In the end, the wizard Lord Khadgar destroyed the portal that the orcs came from. Waste of a business opportunity if you ask me. Then there was an expansion called Beyond the Dark Portal that takes place beyond the Dark Portal that they clearly failed to destroy. Wow, Khadgar. You're a pretty shit wizard. In the expansion's end, the wizard Lord Khadgar destroys the dark portal that the orcs came from. Waste of a business opportunity if you ask me. Then the orc homeworld explodes. Starcraft was a failure that only sold 9 million copies. So Blizzard CEO Mike Mordheim was like, we need to start making real games. So they started working on a cartoon adventure game. The main character Thrall was raised by this guy to be savage like an orc and smart like a human. Mm, saying stuff like that is not okay man. But the adventure game was cancelled because Blizzard were afraid that it might make so much money that it would deflate the dollar. The gameplay is Warcraft 2 with more HP, no boats or oil, but a good story. I would just like to inform you that when I played through this game I could not understand English, so... Five campaigns. In the prologue, a mage named Medivh tells Thrall that a bunch of demons are coming. How will they get here? I don't know, probably through the dark portal. Khadgar is a pretty shit wizard. Instead of fighting, Thrall leaves the continent. He was supposed to become smart and savage, but instead he became a little bitch. The human campaign tells the story of a spoiled little brat named Arthas that finds a sword that turns him into a 75 year old. The undead campaign tells the story of a spoiled little brat named Arthas that summons a giant smurf. In the orc campaign, Thrall has a hard time making new friends at his new school, but then he goes on an adventure and makes lots of friends. And in the Night Elf campaign they rescue a guy named Illidan. Then the giant blue demon decides to destroy a tree, the biggest tree in the world, because he's a dick and works for the logging industry. Then he explodes. The Frozen Throne is one of my top 5 games of all time, but I found out today that it actually has single player. Was hoping for an epic fantasy campaign like the original game, but this one, I am not making this up, is about a night elf cop working her last case to find an escaped convict. So I never played more than 3 levels. Most people use TFT to get to the custom game Dota, which would later inspire Heroes of the Storm, but also good games.
all the magazines wrote of Blizzard's RuneScape killer. In WoW there are two factions battling it out for control over server population. Alliance consisting of cosplayers, little persons, leftists and gnomes. Gnomes have never been in a Warcraft cinematic. The manual describes them as can invent robot birds and submarines but can't invent themselves into being relevant. And the Horde consisting of orcs and undead. The world is full of people needing letters delivered to the other side of the planet. And you idiots will do it for next to nothing. On November 23rd, 2004, the MMO genre died. Blizzard expected to hit 400,000 subscribers in the first year, but they got 400 billion. No one wanted to make MMOs anymore, just reskinned WoWs. It took forever to reach max level 60. Most of that time was spent running or waiting for an important NPC to spawn. I played it. Got to level 20, got killed by a wolf, then I said, how do I find a group in this game? Also, this game is stupid, and for casuals, I'm never playing it again. So I switched back to a real MMO, called Halo 2. Blizzard released the expansion The Burning Crusade. It was about these demons from Warcraft 3 that decided that they should invade. So they reopened the Dark Portal, just like that. God fucking damn it, Khadgar. Blizzard added two new races. Blood Elves for the Horde because they needed an attractive race, and the Draenei for the Alliance. Mmm, that's not what they looked like in the Frozen Throne. My inside sources has told me that the designers wanted them to look like that, but when they showed it to the rest of the staff, they had to rush the entire marketing team to the hospital. You could now become level 70. Seriously, the Burning Crusade killed more careers than the financial crisis. Probably cost it. I played it, they added a group finder and I got to level 40. Took me like a month. Today, if you start a new character, a fairy will come down from the sky and make you level 50. When I hit 41, I realized that questing is stupid and I'm never playing this game again. So I decided to play more Halo. Also, my friend killed me in the arena. What a dick. It was during this time Activision and Blizzard merged. I couldn't find a good picture of Activision, but I did find this picture of Al Diabolo, the Lord of Terror. Bliss released the second expansion, Wrath of Lichy, and it had the best intro ever made. The spoiled brat Arthas has become King of Skeletons. When did that happen? It was like the Burning Crusade but with ice. Except that's not true at all, it was nothing like TBC. Wrath actually had okay quests instead of awful quests. PvP now gave XP, so I finally got to max level 80. But I never got to raid, because I didn't have any friends. And also I am the worst Warcraft player in all of Europe. But I didn't care. Because Halo 3 was amazing, it was what Wrath should have been. A bit sad I never got to fight Arthas though. But last time I resubscribed, I went back to get his sword. I didn't get his sword, he dropped a fucking horse. It wasn't better than the one I had. Also, where the hell did he keep that horse? In his pocket? That's not Deathwing, this is the Deathwing I remember. When did this become more beautiful than this? Stop Blizzard's impossible dragon standards. This is why I never played this one. In Cataclysm, a dragon from Warcraft 2 decided to destroy the planet, instead of having a welder take a look at that chest. Seems like a bit of a fire hazard. All of the original WoW was revamped. For example, Orc Capital got new buildings. Not that it matters. Soon the humans will go through the Industrial Revolution. And all of these will be Starbuckses. Two new races, Brits and more green people. Blizzard removed the need for friends. So now if you wanted to do dungeons, Blizzard would give you temporary friends. So no one cared anymore. It was beautiful. You didn't even have to kill the final boss. Thrall did that for you. Why didn't you do it that time, you fucking Pansy? But tension between Horde and Lions grew. Man, I really want to fight you, but not here. All my friends are here. I agree. If only there was somewhere we could fight. That also appealed to the Chinese market. Mist of Pandaria was released. When Blizzard announced that their next expansion would be about pandas fighting steroid users, everyone thought they had lost their minds. But then when people actually played it, everyone agreed that they had lost their minds. New continent, Pandaria. A land ruled by pandas. And before you say it, no, they did not rip off Kung Fu Panda. They existed in TFT. But that's not an excuse to make a playable race out of the stupidest fucking animals on the planet. 
Why not make these guys a playable race? The starting zone could be a gym. The first quest, gather protein powder. They also introduced a pet battle system that was very similar to Beyblade. I played it again, got to level 86. Then I got banned for using illegal add-ons. I didn't use any illegal gold add-ons, I just installed them. So I switched back to Starcraft, the halo of the PC. WoW subscribers had been dropping fast since Cataclysm, and counterfeiting money was sadly still illegal. But Blizzard found a loophole, and on March 11th, 2014, Blizzard started to print money. Mist of Pandaria was the last WoW expansion. They released this weird single player game. Oh, oh, that was the expansion. Oh. I just realized that I have skipped four years of story, so now I can't explain this one, but there's the Dark Portal and Khadgar, and time travel to before the first game. Actually, what's important to know is that people used to argue what was the worst expansion, and Warlords kinda killed that discussion. You were finally given player housing, called garrisons, and everyone else was given the exact same garrison. Then Blizzard decided to be inspired by the market's top MMOs. For example, automated quests on a timer. Actually, everything was automated and comes to you. This is usually when people turn to opium, but because Blizzard doesn't sell opium yet, people quit. I played Warlords, but then I quit because I realized that I had subscribed 12 times to a game I don't like, and sadly Halo was also dead. I think WoW is perfect right now. You sit alone and wait, find something, teleport there, fight, and then you're alone again. And that's when it hits me. This is fucking Halo! Think about it. They made a group finder and made it so you didn't need quest. They removed the need for friends and made in-game money useless. Blizzard doesn't care about those millions of players, they only care about me. They have been monitoring me for 10 years and changed the game to fit me and only me. Ah, maybe I'm being paranoid. Anyways, at Gamescom they announced Warcraft Legion. In it you will use a one-of-a-kind weapon to defend against an alien invasion. Wait a minute! Gamescom is a German convention. They didn't announce Warcraft Legion, they announced the superior name Kriegskunstlegion. And that is the Killian experience. I hope you enjoyed this, it's always weird doing something new. It took a long time to make and I, the next video will not take as long, so... I think the Warcraft movie trailer looks awful, but that's only me, so whatever man.